You and Ed got me to go vegan. Whoa. We should always go vegan for the animals, not for anyone else. Okay? Just, just checking. But that's inspiring and I'm glad. But I want you all to be vegan for the animals. Not for me. Not for Ed. Not for James. For the animals. That's the fundamental message I want to give to you. Right now. I might have inspired you, but my words contain the message. That's it. My words contain the message and you go vegan for the animals. Because what, what if one day I disappoint you, you know? What if I disappoint you one day? And you go, oh, Joey, you know, Joey, you disappointed me. Well, you're not vegan for me, so you stay vegan and can be disappointed in me. You know what I mean? Like, if, like, you see, like, people that idolize people, right, which is fine. Like, it's fine. Like, if you respect and admire and someone inspires you, that's great. I think it's good to have positive role models, right? But don't let that be the reason you are vegan. The reason you are vegan is because animals are being butchered, exploited, enslaved, stabbed to death by the trillion. That's why you're vegan. Remember that. Fundamental thing. Because whatever happens to me... Or whoever inspired you to go vegan, it doesn't matter. You're always vegan for the victims. Okay? And another thing I want to say. You're not vegan for health. Okay? You are not vegan for health. You eat a plant-based diet for health. You're vegan for the animals. Health is a bolstering message. It reinforces why you're vegan for the animals because you can... Eat a healthy, whole foods, plant-based diet, which improves health, okay? But you are vegan for the animals. Understand? Because you cannot be vegan for health. Because there's many other ways we exploit animals that have got nothing to do with your diet. Alright? Now, most, most of the exploitation and murder is in diet, which is great. But you're not going to be vegan long term and stay vegan and never, you know, cheat and go onto these animal products for health. All right. No one's no one's that 100 percent, you know, fierce about their health forever. Health is a trend. It comes and goes. You might, you know, you might be looking after your health here and there. Some people are really, really like, strict on their health. But that's got nothing to do with animal exploitation. And the word vegan, that's not actually a V, but this is a V. The word vegan is to do with the, um, not is avoiding unjustified exploitation of animals. Okay? What have we learnt? We have learnt you don't go vegan for your idols. Okay? If you if someone's inspired you and brought the message to you, then it's what's in the message that turns you vegan. And that should be for the animals. Because you can't be vegan for any other reason. Sorry. You can't. Health and environment bolster the animal rights message. But the word vegan, by definition, is about the animals. By definition. So if you're following the word vegan and you don't actually know what it means, look it up. Don't worry about me. Look it up. It's all there. It's all there. Um, it's, there's nothing to do with health in the definition of veganism. Okay, not the dictionary definition, the vegan society definition of the word vegan. Got it tattooed here somewhere? Is it tattooed? Oh, it's tattooed here. It's tattooed here. But you've got to know what it means. Okay, you've got to know what it means. Now, you can, of course, like, I'm not saying like health shouldn't be a really strong reason. Of course it is. Like, yeah, it's really, really strong. But like, like, I'm, like you get these people who are like, you know, I want veganism to solve every single health ailment I've ever had in my entire life. Otherwise, I'm going back to exploiting and killing animals, mate. No, that's not how it works, mate. That is not how it works. Yeah, you know, you decrease your risk of certain things. You're definitely improving your health and you're lowering risk factors for heart disease and certain cancers and certain things. But veganism isn't a magic bullet. It's just what veganism is, is you're not unjustifiably causing the exploitation and harm of other sentient animals. Okay? That's what it is. And, you know, people get into this for the wrong reasons and they don't stay vegan because they didn't even understand what veganism was to begin with. And those who did, those who did understand what veganism was, they, they're too self-focused to stay vegan because they forget the victims. Get a sore tummy and then they start stabbing animals in the throat. That's what I have to say about that. If I've inspired you to go vegan, you look at my message, not at me. The message has the animals in it. You focus on the victims. That's why you stay vegan. I've just shown you. 
I've just gone, hey, look, there's the victims. That's why you go vegan. Okay, now you're not vegan for me. You're vegan for the animals. You're not vegan for anyone else. You're not vegan for other activists, other vegans. If some vegan is mean to you and some other activist is mean to you, who gives a shit? You don't, you, you, who gives a shit? You stay vegan for the animals. You don't go, oh, some vegan and activist was mean to me. I hate the vegan community. Oh, they're so judgmental. And now I'm going to go back to stabbing animals in the neck who are innocent and have done nothing wrong to you. That's not how it works. You are vegan for the animals, not for the community, not for your idol, not for the health benefits, for the animals. That's why you're vegan. Okay? Just get that clear. I'm sure we've all got that clear. There's 100 people in here. We've all got that clear. I'm sure a lot of you already have this clear. But there's some people who just need a bit of clarity. And I think like what a very big problem is, it's a huge problem. We treat each other like children. We treat people who aren't vegan like kids, like little babies. They're 30 year old adults, 40 year old adults. We're treating them like babies. No, be direct and honest with people. Tell people exactly who they're stabbing in the throat when they buy a burger. All right, we need to stop treating each other like babies that need our bums wiped for us. We're adults, all right? And that is, I think that's what's wrong. We're not direct and honest and straight up with each other. The animals need strong defense. Like strong, honest, clear defense. Be clear. You know, you don't have to be rude or whatever. Like even if you are rude, whatever, the, the points are the points. You know, you, don't, you can still be respectful and not swear and insult at people. But whatever, the point is the point. You're paying for animals to be stabbed in the throat. You're vegan for the animals and you don't budge on that. You don't budge on your values because of someone else's behavior, because you have a sore tummy. You don't do that. You find a vegan solution to your problems, and there, there is one. And you listen to the, the mountains of scientific evidence. You don't listen to anecdotes from flaky individuals. You know, oh, wishy-washy, yeah, and no, I tried this and tried that, and I've, you know, I've done nothing but breathe air for the last three weeks, and I'm wondering why I'm deficient. You don't listen to them. You listen to the doctors and the mountains of evidence and research that they do on their thousands of patients. Plant-based doctors that reverse the number one killer of human beings with diet. Those doctors, not just your local doctor down the street who got a two-hour nutrition course in the whole five years of their, you know, medical training. <laughs> not that doctor. Dr. Gregor, Dr. Barnard, Dr. Neil, uh, Dr. McDougal, Dr. Michael Clapper, you know, these doctors who've had patients who they've treated for 30 years. That's who you listen to. Not some five-year vegan flaked out, you know, had a sore tummy and, you know, was never really truly, you know, was maybe in it more for health than they were for the animals. And then, you know, it didn't, this diet didn't give them the superhuman powers they wanted it to and didn't cure everything they've ever done wrong to their body in the past. So therefore, you know, veganism is unhealthy or whatever, which has got nothing to do with veganism anyway. And look, I'm going to tell you something. Not everyone's going to be always like, oh, well, I'm heaps happy to hear that. <laughs> I mean, I'm heaps happy you said that. <laughs> like, it doesn't matter. You speak the truth no matter how it makes everyone feel, whatever. Like, that's what I mean about speaking for animals. You're speaking for them. You're speaking for those beings who can't speak for themselves. Whether everyone likes that or not, you know, <laughs> is a different story. Um, a lot of the time, people aren't going to like when you are completely honest and truthful. They don't. They're just like, oh, well, you could have, like, sugar-coated that for me a little bit, you know, so it, like, you know, it didn't hurt my feelings as much. <laughs> you, can, you, can, you can soften the blow of your delivery. That's fine. I don't know. No problem. I do it all the time. I soften my blow and, you know, deliver things in a certain way. But I'm always quite direct and honest because people deserve that, aren't they? Like I said, we're not talking to babies, mate. You know, and if you are talking to a child... A five-year-old child, you know, you know, someone's child, yeah, hey, go on, and you talk to their child and you go, hey, like, do you think animals uh, matter? Yeah, of course. Or do you know that when you eat animal products, it hurts them? <gasps> really? Like, oh my God, done. Vegan. There you go. You know what I mean? Adults, though, will start going, oh, you know, like, what about lions? They murder in, in the jungle. Lions murder in the savannah. Like, therefore, murder is okay. And, um, you know, if animals act a certain way, then I should be able to act like that. And look at my little teeth. Like, those teeth there mean that I can murder whoever I want. And animals and, and eating every type of animal is completely morally justified because I've got these teeth. And, like, they start, like, 
banging out excuses like, I will die of a protein deficiency, or like, um, you know, animals are killed humanely, I've seen it, and I've never seen it before in their life, like, that's what adults do. Children, though, you tell them animals are hurt so they can eat um, animal products, and it's really simple. So, yeah, I think there's a problem with treating adults like babies. Um, you can if you want. I don't think it's, I don't think people, I think uh, it's patronising, you know, and, you know, worrying about every single individual's, like, feelings over the facts and over, like, defending animals, well, that'll be a problem. You'll never be a, a strong advocate, and you, I don't think you're ever going to create the same amount of change as someone who's more worried about, you know, the animals and getting the message and the message out honestly and directly. You know, you worry about everyone's emotions all the time, and you're going to be backed up into a corner, because... You can never please everyone, so you shouldn't try. All you should do is think, you say to yourself, have I spoken for the animals the way they deserve it? What, what would I want someone to say in my, um, if I was about to be... And this, is, this is a serious thing. This ain't no joke. This is someone's being stabbed, tortured, murdered. This is, this is exactly what happens to animals. So if that was you, if that was you about to get stabbed, tortured, murdered, how would you want someone to defend you? Think about that. Think about that. How would you want someone to defend you? Do you want, would you want me defending you? Would you want someone to go, oh, just want, don't worry about their feelings. And, you know, maybe, maybe you should just ask them to, you know, take baby steps in reducing the amount that you're tortured and murdered. Of course not. You would want them to say, stop. Stop. This is the fact. So, you know, so I think, like, we have to have a very strong perspective. I mean, I've stood in slaughterhouses while blood's spraying up on my face and pigs are getting stabbed in the jugular, like literally. And so I've got like a very strong perspective on this. Um, uh, like, fair enough, you don't have to have been standing on a kill floor with blood spraying on your face to have that perspective. Um, you know, you can just really look at the footage yourself and understand what, what the animals are going through and think, well, what if it was me in, my, in their position? What if it was my, you know, my beautiful angel pet uh, companion animal in their position? How would I defend them? Like, you know, obviously you have to be intelligent with the way you deliver messages to people, you know, but at the same time, don't sacrifice honesty because people can read honesty. Um, a lot of people, like adult people, can read honesty and, you know, conviction. Uh, and we just don't have time, basically, as well. We don't have time. But anyways, guys, um, yeah, I hope that, you know, you got, like, a clear message about we go vegan for the animals. You don't go vegan for health. Health is a bolstering thing really is there's a lot of great science to support um, a whole foods plant-based diet you can eat junk food vegan and not even care about your health ever veganism is a moral principle against the unjustified exploitation of sentient animals okay there's no justification for it health bolsters that don't go vegan for your idols go vegan for the animals okay even if your idol is inspired you and you're like wow they're so inspirational that's great but if your idol disappoints you, you don't go back to stabbing animals in the throat because you're vegan for them, not for your idol. That's the message. I love you all. I'll speak to you all soon.